In the reference photo, the shed is very much in the shade, but we will remedy that later. Now when doing a wash, keep the board at a slight slope so that gravity controls the water. Ideally, the brush should be well loaded with the color mix, enough to execute one stroke across the paper. In this instance, I did not fill the brush enough. During the wash, it is important to not let the wash area dry out, otherwise streaking of the color will occur. I've decided that it will be late afternoon, so I'm merging a light pink glow near the horizon. Add a light wash of burnt sienna to the grassy area. This will indicate the ground surface where there are gaps in the grass. Do not make the upper area too dark, otherwise it will interfere with the sunlit grassy areas. We can however darken the lower area and streaks in this area can be an advantage. Make all the brush strokes follow the slope of the land. Give the log a brighter undercoat of the burnt sienna. Lock in the initial shade color with a mix of blue and red with a touch of the opposite color yellow to desaturate the color. Feather the lower end to indicate the lighter grass below them. With a lighter mix of the shade color, block in the main shadows. The bush is painted with a mix of sap green with a touch of burnt sienna to desaturate the green. Feather the top to indicate the loose twigs at the edge. And while still wet, drop some of the darker mix in for the shadows to make it darker at the bottom for the deep shade. Add the shadow at the bottom of the log. Then feather the lower section to indicate the grass and lightly indicate the shadows for the roughness of the surface.
With some red paint, add the discoloured planks. A few vertical lines will give the impression of the vertical planks. And as I have artist license, I've changed the angle of the sun. This adds more life and a pleasing effect to the painting. A light wash of yellow to the roof for the sunshine effect and a light wash of burnt sienna on the end facing the sun. To help us get a better visual of the tree, first block in the trunks and the branches with a light wash of the previous shade color. I'm using a number 12 Daler D77 Daylon synthetic round brush for most of the painting. It holds quite a lot of paint and has a reasonably sharp point to it as well, so I'm able to do smaller work with it. To do the finer twigs, it is best to hold the brush upright and only just touch the tip on the paper. Any further pressure will result in a thicker line and practice makes perfect. Don't try to paint the twigs perfectly. Have a touch and go effect, giving the impression of lots of them. Now I'll begin painting in the darker shadow areas of the branches and trunk. Leave open areas where the sun will be shining on them. You will have to use your imagination here as to where they will be. And it's always better to leave open spaces now than try to lift out paint at the later stage. We can always add more shadows at the end where needed. All the little branches and twigs between the main branches make the tree look much more natural. Because the tree is in sunlight, add a burnt sienna glaze over all the branches and trunk. If it's a bit too light, then brighten it up some more. A 
a few slanting stripes for the corrugated roof and a few dabs to warm up some patches in the bush. Now with a light yellow-green mix, spot in all the leaf clumps that are in sunlight, leaving some of the blue sky showing through. Once that is done, make a dark green mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Carefully dab in all the large and smaller leaf clumps, with here and there a few loose spots for loose leaves along the edges. Continue with the rest of the tree. This green for the willow tree is cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue, with a dab of burnt sienna to desaturate it slightly. Too bright a green will bring it forward too much. Just for fun, I'm using a Chinese brush given to me about 10 years ago as a present by one of my Chinese schoolgirl students when I taught in Auckland. The shadow color is just a stronger mix with a touch more burnt sienna to warm it up a bit. This balances the warmth of the shed. Also keep in mind the hanging branches of the willow tree. Carefully block in the gaps in between the fence woodwork. You don't have to be absolutely accurate. And if you are a bit hesitant here for peace of mind, you can cover the fence with masking fluid. The main purpose here is not to lose the white of the paper, as the fence is part of the main feature of the painting. The main focus of the painting is the shed, and the secondary focus is the fence.
Mix a very strong dark from sap green or vitello green and burnt sienna with a touch of ultramarine blue for this tree. Drop in some into the still damp willow tree for the shade areas. Be careful not to block in completely. We must leave spaces for the birds to fly through. It also just looks more natural and most trees have what we call sky holes. With the same dark mix, we can now paint in the shadow areas of all the branches in the trunk. Often a pigment that looks very dark when wet dries lighter than most expect. This is the time to darken up all the smaller branches that are silhouetted. Without thinking, I covered up most of the sunlit areas on the branches. Because the patello green I used in the mix is a staining color, it is now very difficult to cleanly lift out those areas. Add in all the small dry twigs with a number two Riga brush or a script brush. Take a look in nature and you will notice that many trees have them. It also adds interest to the painting and becomes handy space fillers. While you have the brush in hand, touch up all the other areas as well. I try to lift some color out for the lighter branches. Because of the staining color I mentioned earlier, you can see I was not successful, even though I was using a small flat bristle brush to do so. 
Because I had not been painting in watercolors for the past few years, I forgot about the staining colors. I decided to add a few loose leaves in the top right hand corner to round it off better. Time now to finish off the shed. Even though this is the shadow side, the overhang of the sheeting casts even deeper shadows. And this contrasts nicely with the lighter roof. I didn't do a good job with the planking on the side, but this will be improved later on. Brighten the end with burnt sienna. Add the shadow patches on the roof with some very light color used for the wall. The posts are green, and if too bright, dull them down with shadow color. And then, with a small round brush, carve in the convolutions of the corrugated iron sheeting.
Now we have the chance to rectify the planks at, on the end. Add one or two thicker lines to give the impression of gaps between some of the planks. I lifted some color out to make the branch come out from the front instead of out of the side. After painting in the fence with burnt sienna, dab some into the tree and bush areas as well to add some warmth to them. Especially add some concentrated color to the sunlit areas on the branches to try and bring them out again. It is the log's turn now. I'm simplifying the details as I only want to show the main features. It is not necessary to paint all the small details. <laughs> 
Too much detail on the log would detract from the main focus of the painting, which is the shed. The log was only left in the painting as it points to the shed and optically balances it. To add some life into the painting, I'm adding a small blackbird on the roof and a few others flying in the distance. To make the fence look more realistic, carefully add the shadows to the underside of the woodwork. The grass mix is lemon yellow and cobalt blue. You can also use ultramarine instead of cobalt blue. To start off, keep it more to the yellow side where the main sunlit areas are. The brush I'm using is a hair or a fur brush and is a half inch eave Golden Taclon Series 2875. You can use any old brush which has splayed hairs. Even an old oil painting hog hair brush would work. I do not need to do much talking here, so follow what I do. Take note of where I change color and tone to indicate the variations of the surface of the hillside.
I've turned the brush sideways to enable me to paint the longer, thin grasses. Notice that I've left some small gaps for the ground color to show through. I'm darkening this corner and this forces the viewer's eye up into the painting. Now every painting needs a lead in. The dark shadow of the tree outside of the picture area gradually leads the viewer's eye, whether they realize it or not, upwards towards the shed. Another lead-in is the dark line from the corner left towards the tree shadow, which then in turn leads to the shed. As I started to remove the masking tape, I noticed that the paper was beginning to rip. I immediately stopped and burnished the paper with the back of my fingernail to restore the fibers. I should have known better. I reach for the hairdryer and switching to medium heat, I carefully pull the tape away to the side as the glue softened. Thank you for painting along with me. You may use my reference photo and sign the painting as yours. Happy painting. Mm -hmm.